Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Stephen. Glad you're back on the computer instead of the phone as well. That must mean you're home and no longer traveling. Good morning, Perry. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Amazing. Great crew. Good morning, Michael. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, new names and faces here. Eileen, I believe. Am I saying it correctly? Welcome. Glad to have you. <clears throat> we'll just give it another minute. Let everyone straggle in. It's Sunday morning. Make sure you have your coffee. There's another one coming in. Okay, I think we've got a, a quorum here. Good morning, Nick. Okay, <clears throat> let's hit it. Got coffee always, Michael. I knew there was multiple reasons why I liked you so much. That is one of them. Okay, let's get into it. I saw your, uh, I hope everyone got the email slash discord messages. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't say I dropped the ball. I fumbled the ball a little bit for sure because I, I we had a pretty good number of people show up. Uh, but with Friday being Veterans Day, we obviously didn't have a post-market end of our um, session because there was no market. <clears throat> so we snuck one in on Thursday, um, although I was notified today that I might have misloaded the wrong recording. So I will take a look at that. Um, trying to, I'm trying to put some time into organizing uh, what's in our, our YouTube and um, everything is up to date right now for all links in the and if you're new you'll be getting this in your emails so you'll you'll be on the distribution list for the emails on the emails you'll see links for our um our class resources so the content library the welcome kit um make sure that you have the schedule so that you always have the right links that's that's in your emails every single time you'll see those links in there a lot of information in the content library a um, lot of information in the uh, welcome kit for you to download the trading plan, to download the trade logs, to download the market posture log. A lot of good information in there for you. Welcome out to the Market Watch group. My name is Scott. Um, I, I will be your host. Today we are talking about weekly market prep. Uh, sorry to hear it, Michael. Said he lost on a little bit of profit because he did not close Thursday. Uh, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Here's the disclaimers. I'm not going to read them. Just let them sit for a second. They're in your email if you want to read through them. Here's our agenda today. Market posture. Okay. So we've we've been we've seen some things. Our posture has fluctuated. It's bent, but never broke. We now are deciding. Are we going to get a at least maybe a two bounce fall slash Santa rally? We didn't get the October bounce. We had a divergence with the cyclical pattern, but then we had all of a sudden an abrupt, um, very bullish week where the buyers strongly came in. They had volume. They pushed it for the biggest five, six, seven days than we had seen in a year. They're, they're the buy We were like, where's the buyers? That was what was in August. In, no, not August. <clears throat> I'd say late September into October as we watched and said, is this thing going to recover? We had a couple of times where it gave signals that looked like it was going to go. And then all of a sudden, what happened? Buyers didn't show up. Buyers don't show up. It's hard to be bullish. That's <laughs> pretty pretty. uh um, pretty much always going to be the case. And then all of a sudden, the buyers did show up. And that's where we find ourselves now. Uh, we'll look at the economic calendar, see what's coming out this week that might provide fuel or disruption for whatever's going on. Uh, our searching. I feel pretty good, actually. We've been 
we've been cleaning and 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 managing the watch list. I hope <laughs> I hope you've been watching that process. As we go through our watch list day to day, there's times where we watch a stock and maybe it breaks a support level and we're just like that's that, that's it. I'm no I have no interest in that now. And we get rid of it. And as we got rid of things, we're like, hey, our watch list is pretty small. So as things started to recover and show strength, we've been searching and saying, hey, now that the dust has settled, let's make sure. And we, I think we're going to see more of the same today as we do our sector rotation. I think that you'll see it's broad-based. Right? It's broad-based. There's plenty of, of uh, opportunity um, if you hear people who say, oh, this was only the big seven, that's not true. <laughs> the big seven certainly started because they're the only ones who can. And now we see broad, broad uh, uh, bullish pressures coming in. We'll we'll do some of that watch list maintenance. We'll look through the watch list to see if there's um, a shopping list. And, and yes, I think there will be. I think we're going to see that there's trades that are already set up. I think there are trades that are setting up. <clears throat> and I think there are trades that we're waiting to see if they are going to move into a consolidative slash setup position. Okay. Um, lastly, we'll, we'll talk about this week's trading plan section of the week. That's uh, uh, if you're new, one of the things that we do, we have a, uh, I'll show you at the end of the hour, we have a trading log that we were, excuse me, a trading plan outline that we work off of. It's broken down into eight sections. We work on one section a week and we constantly are looping through it, right? So some people have been here for months. They've been through their trading plan. God, I got to think there's a couple of you that might have three full passes at your trading plan. And if you've been doing it every time and just going in, it's, it's just you put a little work in. You go put a little work in. What I asked for is, three days a week for a half an hour, hour and a half. No, I think I even said 20 minutes, an hour a week on your trading plan specifically, right? Not on, not like you're trading, you're looking at your, three 20 minute periods specifically dedicated to your trading plan. Every two months, you will have a full iteration on your trading plan, a new version. New observations, new rules, a little bit better, a little bit stronger. After six months, three passes, you will have an incredible trading plan. It will be. Um, there will be record keeping. There will be <clears throat> rules and routines, organization and structure and analytics and data and observations and goals and it will cycle and it will shampoo, rinse, repeat over and over and over, constantly trying to figure out how to do things better. It's a machine you're building, right? So, okay, let's dive into it. This week's trading plan section of the week, trading rules, trading rules, section three. Okay, first things first. Now, for those of you who are new or newish, <laughs> the, th the three links that I'm sending you, are as follows. This is your welcome doc. And in this welcome doc, th these are all links. The, if you click a link in your email, it'll bring you specifically to this Google doc. And in this Google doc, you have the current watch list that we're working off of. You have um, historical market posture. You have our trading plan outline. You have the top 10 trading mistakes. You have an options log, a stock log, a blank market posture spreadsheet. You, you have access to the content video library. You have the basic search parameters for the bullish search. You'll see that today. And you have all the links for the market posture analysis and resources that we use. That's one. Then you have the, the schedule. This is the source of truth. You want to, you want to bookmark this. Um, you, you, you want to bookmark this link here because this is always the source of truth. This will always have the the times and the links for the sessions that's just good to have and it has some of our other links in there as well the content library this is where we have some snippets we have some trading plan videos i'm missing one i'll get that one 
We have market posture videos. We have our trading foundations course. And that's where like you can see any of these areas that you think you need to work on within your system. <laughs> it's all in here. This week, we are doing a little scratch the surface intro to options Tuesday and Thursday. Join us for that. Um, however, the good news is right, we, we're almost done. We're going to do some post-trade assessments. We're going to do a couple of trading case studies where we actually look at entire trades, start to finish, and just talk about it. And then we're going to do a roundup with the Q&A. Now, instead of starting over at the beginning, I am launching a options foundations course. So one month, we have eight weeks in the month of December that we're focused on options. So if you are an options trader, if you've wanted to be an options trader, um, jump in. It'll be, a, it'll be a blast. Um, it's going to be fast-paced a little bit. So the, the foundations is intro. So for somebody who's never traded before, they're going to dive in there and they're going to eat it up. It's also a good recap for those. I, I, I'm telling you, I've cleaned a few things up on my own just because of, of necessity as I was developing the class. I'm like, oh, gosh, you know what? I haven't been doing that. I better get... <laughs> But the options one should be uh, 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 quite strong. So there you go. Don't forget to join the Discord group. I'm going to resend in a separate email. Maybe I'll put it in. No, I'll send a separate email. Um, the the link to join Discord with the instructions on how to download it and get everything going. Let's posture. First things first. This, this is just a manual process. I come in here. I right click. I hit insert. I right click, I copy, I right click, I paste. That's it. Um, then I change the date. Why? Because I want it to work and I'm sure I could probably build some macro that I hit a button, it does it for me. Um, I'm not that good at spreadsheets. <laughs> That's the bottom line. But this spreadsheet works from, from right to left. So we can come through here. Why do I want this? Remember that, that this is part of our record keeping. It's not just... How did I do and what did the market do to review a period of time to evaluate it? I have to understand what my interpretation of the market was at the time, right? I can't be like, oh, the market was bad. Well, if the market was bad and I thought it was good, that's, a, that's on me, right? If I'm like, oh, I'm still bullish because I love being bullish and the market just keeps getting weaker, I got to look at my posture process and say, I failed there. I didn't. I didn't reflect what the market did and I paid for it, right? Those are the types of assessments that we're kind of forcing ourselves into when we look backwards and we and we um, make attempts to learn from our experience. All right. Let's just quickly look at last week's score relative to the week before. So we had kind of a, it's interesting, right? Because this was our V. We we were we bounced back up to like this this one one seven five one two five. So for these three weeks, we were just kind of like maybe, maybe, if the buyers came in, our our fall rally was there, but they didn't, and it just sort of and then all of a sudden we got this one two five minus point five one two five, and you're like, wow, that's that's kind of a choppy number, Scott. I thought you don't like your number to chop. I, I would prefer it not to, but sometimes it is what it is. Um, oh, come on. Uh, attempt to reconnect. Sorry, I need to uh, reinitiate my charts, apparently. What's going on? Okay. How's everybody's um, transition? If you were Ameritrade, if you were Ameritrade and now you are Charles Schwab, how was the transition? Let me know. Um, are there is there anyone in the group now who doesn't have a broker selected yet, or is questioning um, the broker that they're using? Because that's that's definitely one we get a lot of questions about. Um, uh, people, here's the deal. I, I can't recommend, right? I'm not an advisor, so I don't recommend. Uh, my broker is now Charles Schwab. 
Why? Because it used to be Ameritrade. <laughs> and before it was Ameritrade, it was Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim used to be its own company, actually, for those of you who didn't know. Um, and it, that's, that's the nature. Uh, what was my password? Nope, that wasn't it. It made me change my password, though. Oh, got it. <laughs> it made me change my password to a different one than I had had. Uh, lost watch list when it switched, Greg said. I have to rebuild them. I wish I could transfer from TradingView. Okay, I think you can... Uh, you know what? Google... Google Trading View watch list to Thinkorswim TOS watch list because you might be able to. There is, um, no, you know what's funny, Michael? My password was so old, it didn't even have any signs in it, and it made you add a sign. <laughs> was this letters and numbers? I had literally had the same password since like 2006. And they gave you a little bit more back then, a little more leeway. Never had to change it one time in all that. In all that. Well, maybe even 18. How long has it been? 17 years. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, let's get to it so we don't fall behind. I'm going to fly a little bit today. So if you're new and you're like, what is going on with this market posture? One of the things that I'm hoping to actually film, I've been meaning to do it, and I have some time today, is a welcome video that, that lets me walk you through like, hey, here's this, here's how you're going to use this so that you can acclimate quickly. The more I think about it, the more I think, yeah, it makes sense. Let's do it. Um, but yours doesn't, oh my gosh, maybe I didn't have to. But the, the um, first time you're going to be a little bit like, okay, just sit back, watch, and, and listen as we start making some connections. Um, hopefully it'll it'll come quickly, but there are a lot of video resources. Every routine that I'm doing right now, there's six components of this. There's a video for each one. There's a broad video for this. There's there's a lot of support for you to kind of catch up and and just um, self serve yourself so that you're comfortable during these live interactions. Right, that's what we're trying to provide. Okay, first things first. Long term, what is the Starting point, 0.75. So last week we raised it a quarter of a point. It dropped and then regained that quarter of a point. We'll see if there's much change. I'm going to say probably not. Where did it get? So it lost the quarter of a point. Let me get my drawing tools out real quickly. Um, so the 0.75 score that I have right now is reflective of this trend, right? That's the high line. That's the low line. This is the current trend. If it were stronger, right? Now, if it were, let me get this to straight lines. If it were trending, that's a zero. And I would say that's probably, it's pretty unsustainable, but that would probably be a two. So you can see where we are now, right? So, you know, some people might say, Scott, I think that's maybe more of a one based on that zero to two. And remember that it would be a minus two would be if it were trending down, um, which we which we did do back here, right? That was my trend in 2002. So what was my market posture score for the long term back then? About a minus one for most of the year maybe accelerated upwards to about 1.5 during during this this summer period may june july right you can just kind of see what would cause those those scores to happen so what happened i busted out of it and then i busted right back into it busted out lost a quarter of a point busted back in gained a quarter of a point now what unless this entire angle changes we won't rescore this Right, So this thing could move all the way up 
and get to here and then come back down and this score will stay 0.75. Now, if it if it goes up here and it breaks out of this, then I might say, oh, you know what? I'm going to give that a, an extra point. I'm going to give that, not a point, a quarter point. I'm going to move that now to a one. Um, and this is just going to give me a, a fluid representation of right now, what do I see as being representative of institutions? This is the institutional trend. Right? You can see it. Um, now, if you're ever thinking to yourself, hey, Scott, does your does your break the consolidation high or low work for long term trends? One up broke the consolidation higher low there, a little bit even more higher low there. By March, we had we were convinced the institutions had reversed. Right. Was there bullish momentum to trade in these windows? Yeah. And and we would find that, but but we really kicked it into gear at this time right there. Now what? Are we convinced the trend is broken or not? No, I'm not. I'm back in, back to the positive. Okay, same scenario. So what am I doing with my score? I'm leaving it alone, 0.75. Let me know if you see it different. If you're a one, if you're a 0.5, if you're a negative, we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> Um, if you're a negative, we're gonna have a conversation. If you're a, if you're like I'm a two, that's that's as bullish as it gets. We're gonna have a conversation. <laughs> okay, I would want to know why. I'd be like, what do you see that makes you think that is a long term bearish trend? Let's go to the short term. Let's go to the short term. Um, I don't want to draw right now. There we go. Okay. Still, still adapting to these new Zoom tools. Okay, so what do we have here? What was my prior score? Um, yeah. Boy, we just sort of keep grinding higher, don't we? It looked, wait a second, where am I? Nine. Okay, something's wrong here, right? Let me see. Give me one second. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I think I am a hundred percent. Like I'm Perry's like, so I, I had a completely misread the situation, um, about Friday. I don't know how I did that. Um, I thought we had a market closure on veterans day. Did they change the normal holidays? That's on me for sure. Uh, bullish day. Um, boy, that's hilarious and terrible. Um, surprised you, Press? Yeah. I, I, um, okay. Well, let me regroup. Bullish day. Um, I don't know what it was about it that I was was the bond market closed then and not the stock market. I'm wondering if it was the bond market. I thought something was closed on Veterans Day. Um, obviously the stock market was not bullish day. Um this is the this is an interesting puts us in an interesting place. Um, because I am actually going to raise my score. Why am I raising my score? Because remember, I'm going to reward the buyers. Um, for 
breaking highs and lows. And you can see we had a resistance level here, it's pretty strong resistance level. We hit it, we hit it here, and then we pulled back, and then we hit it again. And we couldn't get through it, and we dropped way, way, all the way down here. And then we got the V bottom, and the V bottom put us back up here. Um, and we, we tested that same level, and we started to turn. And on Thursday, it looked like it looked like we were getting um, uh, any of this. Um, the bond markets, which are often closed on Veterans Day, will not. So they were all, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, That's on me. I apologize. Um, the uh, uh, I don't know where it came to me that it was a closed. I, 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 th I, th I thought it was always closed on Veterans Day, to be perfectly honest. But, okay, let's keep going. Uh, we broke it, though, right? So on Thursday, on Thursday, we saw the sellers starting to push this, this overbought level started to come down uh, and, and roll over from this overbought level. Now, it hasn't, even though this, the candle busted, it wasn't on above average volume. You'll notice that we're not going to do anything with our volume this week. How do I know that? Um, Veterans Day observed. Sorry, Veterans Day observed. The If you look in here, if you look in here, Um, there is a lack, right? There is no volume inside. Uh, there's Below average, below average, below average, below average, average. So even though we had, and, and you'll notice this was the tail end of that V. The V happened the two weeks before, and then one week back up, we got almost all of it back. Right? And now what? And now we busted through it a little bit. We didn't have a breakout volume, though. So how do I interpret that? I still interpret that as we are overbought. Right now, there may have been trades put on already. We're going to go through the watch list and see. But as of right now, um, I'm going to give that a quarter of a point. We're going to kind of pop through this quickly. This one is going to now go to a point five because the buyers got a little bit better. The volume, though, is not actually the volume may change now that I think about it. Let's move in. Um, let's move in. And take a look at the, we're going to take a look at the one month daily chart. Okay. Uh, you're going to see it's still mostly still, we've got, we've got sellers, sellers. What am I doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm identifying all of the above average volume days. That's a selling day. Those three are selling days. Those two, I would give at least, um, actually, I'd probably give them both. So you can see right there, we've got six selling days in a row. Then we got one here and one here, and that's it. Six to two. Six to two for the, for the sellers. Next week, however, next week, as long as there's no more additional... Um, additional um, above average volume days for either side. Two of these days will drop off, right? Remember that these five days, right? Let's see, one, two, three, four. These five days are going to drop off. So then all of a sudden we have four selling days and two buying days. Now imagine if we get one, just one buying day next week, one above average buying day, then it's four to three. 
And for me, four to three, especially if the four selling days are at the back half and the buying days are at the front half, I'm back, I'm back to a tie. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise it a half of a point. So we we don't need when I'm when I'm assessing the volume, I don't need there to be seven straight buying volume days to be like, oh, there's the buyers. It can happen where we have a couple of them. And then as the other days start to fall off, we're like, that's it. The sellers, that, that's that's the last remnant of the sellers. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave the score the same. But that that definitely is one that by next week could easily raise by half of a point. Okay. Okay. Major market. Let's get in there. So we're starting at 200 days. What do we see? Remember that at this point, we don't even have an idea when you look to the left of this chart. You don't even have an idea that there was a bear market. There was back in 2022, but all we see now is what's happened this year. And what do we have? We have the NASDAQ bullish. Um, we have the S&P bullish. We have the Dow flat. I mean, over the course of the entire year. And you're like, yeah, it was a pretty bullish year. If you had been invested in the Dow, you were breaking even. If you were invested in small caps, you're down 10%. This, this is why this matters. You can see they all look very similar in the way they behave. But the NASDAQ was clearly leading, followed by the S&P, then the, then the Dow, then the Russell. What do we see when we drop it to 133 days? More of the same. Still the NASDAQ leading, still tech, still, still a strong appetite for risk as the market pursues technology. Um, but the, the market's not pursuing small caps. So we're bullish, but not that bullish. Does that make sense? Right? This this is a one-pointer on my scale. Um, I can't get past a half of a point if, or if only the NASDAQ is leading. And that's only if we keep that half of a point. So here you can see NASDAQ leading. There's the there's the S&P gives us our, our, our watermark. Tends to be in the middle. The Dow lagging. The Russell even more so. But when we've been going to the 66 day, this is where we've seen a shift. When we've seen it go back and forth between the NASDAQ and the Dow as who's trying to push. If it's the Dow pushing, that has a defensive connotation. And we're like, wait a second, relax. If it's the NASDAQ pushing, we're like, that has a bullish connotation. And we think that's money moving back in, right? So if we look at what our score was, um, we, we were zero, zero, zero. All of a sudden we scored it up a quarter of a point, then right back to zero, zero, zero. What gave it that quarter of a point? The same thing that's giving it a quarter of a point now. The same thing that's giving it a quarter of a point now, which is, um, the fact that the, that the NASDAQ has popped back up into a leading position and the Dow has fallen back down into a slightly lagging position because that wasn't what it looked like. Um, I would think I can change this. Let me see. Back in here, you can see we would we, we saw the NASDAQ at the bottom and the Dow at the top. And that looks a little bit more defensive. So it's subtle, but it makes changes. But now where we are, it's moved back. So what am I going to do? I'm going to give it that quarter of a point back. Here's the 22. On the 22 day, eh, it's still a little dicey, but the 66 is my score. As I see money flowing into the NASDAQ, that tells me that the market's appetite for risk is increasing. I feel pretty good about that. Okay, 0.25. There's a second one. Uh, sector rotation. We're going to do the same thing. But remember, this time we're trying to also understand what sectors provide us the best opportunity to build our watch list with. So what do we have? Uh, technology, communication services. Technology and communication services has been the, the stalwarts of leading this market. They, they led all the way back to when we first 
saw this market starting to show strength back in um, February and March. Who let us out? Technology and communication services. And they stayed strong and they just kept advancing, kept advancing, right? But then all of a sudden we started to see right in this area, discretionary started to accelerate. And then they moved up into a leading position. Okay, but but that's not where we are now. We can't look at that. We have to kind of come over here and say, where are we now? But now you can see that these have moved back up. Look at technology back at the top. Look at communication services. There it is. Who's third? Discretionary. Who's coming up from behind trying to make a statement? Industrials. The rest of them are down here. Still, let's go to 133. Change the perspective. What do we see? Tech. Communication services. And discretionary. What else do we see? We see energy convincingly falling out of a leading position. So the, the energy is more of a, a inflationary pressures. We'd like to see energy fall. That's not what we want to see lead. So we love to see energy pulling back while we see financials and industrials moving forward. Who's at the bottom? Healthcare. Defensive. Staples. Defensive. Utilities. Defensive. From this time frame, even though a lot of it has some sidewaysness because of the dip we had in, in September and October, it still shows a bullish like growth alignment, if that makes sense. Let's go to 66 days. Oh, look at that. Look at that spike out of here. Seeing technology now. If you've been like, hey, I'm watching chip stocks a little more closely. I'm watching Apple and Microsoft and softwares and uh, uh, things a little more closely, then you're doing the right thing. This is this is evidence of that, visual evidence that shows you that the money flow is going primarily into technology, also into communication services, which is definitely technology adjacent. Okay, who else is trying to kind of help carry the water? Financials. Financials. We already said industrials and consumer discretionary. <clears throat> We saw them on the previous chart. We're not seeing them as much here. Here we're seeing financials. There's industrials. Um, you're not seeing it as much there. There's discretionary. You're not seeing as much there because discretionary got kind of beat up for a minute there. Let's go to 22 days just to give us a quick look ahead. Who's in the lead and who's doing what up in here. So on this one, we actually got a weird bit of defensiveness that was this kind of like what's going on with utilities and staples um yeah we saw that last week too actually and we were like uh, in fact if we back this up a little bit right up oh, nope nope <laughs> not four thousand days let's go 22 days but let's back it up a little bit you can see here, utilities was leading everything. And we're like, what the hell is going on? I don't think that it's had much of an impact, but certainly it's problematic. Um, we'll see. But for me, um, let's go back to our score. We've been a 0. 0.5. We've seen, we've seen, I, I, I'm not, I don't have enough to raise that. I would need to see at least one more sector. So whether it's, financials or industrials or consumer move on a on a different time frame yeah, i mean look it's bullish it stays bullish but it's not improving so that looks fine okay let's finish with the vix if you have any questions please even if you're if you're if you're new and you're like well i don't want to ask the question because there's videos just ask it there's a good chance someone else has it too just ask it be comfortable I hope it's an inviting environment to ask questions. Okay, so what's going on in the VIX? So in the VIX, we we started to have a turn on Thursday, and then Friday we came back down. What I want you to notice, though, is that we came right back down to, to Thursday's low. I'm still seeing this as the same bounce. Um, as opposed to what? 
Well, the, the alternative, and this is what you would have to be ready to trade on pretty quickly, is if this was just like a one-day consolidation, right? Just a, um, a one-day consolidation that went up, and then it's just coming straight back down, and now it goes down like this. If it goes down like this, this is going to be bullish right here. So then there would be a question of, Right? Did bullish trades trigger, etc.? Okay. What's the score, though? Nothing new happened. I didn't make any lower lows or higher lows or whatever else. So for me, as of right now, well, actually, let me see. 0.25. Um, we were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We were here. Pause, pause, pause. No, I'm wrong. We did. We made a lower low. We were here and we got lower still. I'm going to give it that quarter of a point. 0. 0.5. Two. I'm a two. What does that mean? Remember, it's out of 10. But bullish is, you know, once you get to like three and a half, you're bullish. Two to three, you're slightly bullish. So we're right at the at the neutral to slightly bullish transition. That's from a broad perspective. Am I am I feeling better? Well, yeah, look what I have. The momentum has gone from a minus 0.5 to a 1.25 to a 2. We've, we've talked about the fact that there is cyclical strength that comes from, let me get that cyclical picture up here. So we, we did get, we didn't get this. We didn't get this bullish October. We went the other way. But then right at the end of October, we did get this big rally that starts November. You can see that there's a rally that ends October and starts November. And then what? And then it tends to consolidate sideways. And I even said, hey, you know what? This thing can give a false signal and then, and then come back down still one more time. False signal, come back one more time. Where, where could we possibly see something like that? Fault signal, pull back still, then turn. There's that sideways. Where's that sideways remind us of? Let's go back in here. That sideways would be this correlative right here. Then we have a little bit of a pullback. And then what? Late November to early December rally. Bam. Consolidation. And then another rally. That, that tends to actually go into January, then a pullback, and then another rally. That's that's what we're hoping for is that we come into, right? Then there may be a little bit of a consolidation followed by our March and April tend to be pretty bullish. So if we, if we move back into this cyclical pattern, that's what it would look like. And we've definitely moved back into something similar to what we have a tendency to see. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so that's my posture. So I'm I'm not going to get faked out by this. Am I going to maybe have a couple of bullish trades on? Yes. Is this where I feel like, oh, we had a bullish window. We better get a bunch on. No. Let's go through the watch list and see that. So this is the watch list as it stands now. The watch list is available to you. It was re updated just recently. Um, just go into those links. You'll find it in there. Um, Apple. I mean, Apple looks great. It's so strong. The biggest problem with Apple right now is it's a little bit of a freight train and it just sort of keeps on smashing higher. It looked like it might pause for a minute and give us a consolidation to catch the next trade. We, we want it to look like it did back here where it goes up and then it pulls back and gives us a trade and it goes up and pulls back. Gives us a trade and then gives us a trade. This thing could give, you know, four trades in a row potentially, but we have to wait for that. We don't want to get in. Look at this stochastics. You're overbought. It's just kind of grind in there. It's, it's hard to pull. It's hard to trade into that right there. But then all of a sudden we get a bullish Friday, right? Um, And, and there you go. What do you do with that? Adobe. 
big. Look at that big day. Turning. AEO still kind of flat, still kind of grinding at resistance. Aflac giving a signal. Now, here's the deal. This is still somewhat anticipatory if you traded this Friday. If you traded this Friday, that would be somewhat anticipatory. Why? Because this has not turned. It's pinched. Would I be willing to trade anticipatory now going forward? More so, yes. Why? Because my score improved. On October 29th and the week following, if you said, hey, this, this, there's a little bit of a signal here. Are you going to anticipate it and take the trade? My answer would be no. When my score improved from minus 0.5 to a 1.25, if you said, are you going to anticipate? My answer would improve slightly to probably no. Most likely no. It would have to be really like, oh, man. So this would not have qualified. Now that I've improved again for a second straight week and I'm back to a two, now if someone said, would you anticipate, my, my answer would be maybe. Maybe. If it gets up to a four, probably. If it gets to a five, yes. Yes, I will. That's how I see it, right? Um, and, and that's part of the way that the market posture influences our trading just from an overarching perspective. I don't want to have to make that decision, right? It's made. It's made. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look for that anticipation. Okay. AIG, same scenario. Which means what? Which means that if we're patient, we can come into this thing, and uh, 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 maybe it opens down a little bit. Maybe right. But we're we're definitely looking at this for opportunity. If I get into this on Monday, I would definitely have a stop loss underneath this high and Ashley, and I'd have a pretty tight stop. And let's see what we can catch. Oh, that's no problem with that at all. I'll be honest. I definitely hate. Well, I don't hate it, but I I like trading into Fridays the least, uh, because it it does put you into a time decay scenario. There's there's issues there, trading into Fridays. Okay. Insurance both look strong. AMD still kind of grinding higher. Uh, Amazon, yeah, there's 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 a few of these where you're like, do I think this was a, a turn? You better be real convinced. Why? Because you're at 52-week resistance. You're within a dollar and a half. You're within 1% of a 52-week high. Um, you, you need volume. You need volume. If you're breaking resistance, you need volume, right? Okay. APH. I mean, everything still looks bullish. ASAN, actually, this one looks like it could be pulling back into a, a tradable position. It was big on this day, but I think that we hit this resistance. This has come down a little bit. It's coming down. If we hover in here, right? If we if we stall out at this level and then turn and we see this turn from there, that would be what we were looking for. So there are some of these that are still setting up. But that Friday pop day um, was interesting. Capital One Financial. Oh, this looks great. Credit cards is one that we said we like coming out of financials, right? Um, still, still got the put trade on board, okay? And you can see what happened there, right? It it, it was down and then came back, so it it didn't gain or lose ground, but that's a hammer candle. That that's right hammer out a bottom so if you notice what's happening here i would definitely be concerned if this thing turns that's definitely a bullish trade for us um absolutely conoco phillips oil is down like to see that there you go you got it press absolutely 
Costco. Oh, look at Costco. So Costco does look like a flag to me. <laughs> Costco does look like a flag. Now, if you feel like you missed something like this, you do have the ability to go hike and ashy for continuation. It's not even there yet, right? So on Monday, if it opens down a little bit, especially, you might have a great opportunity to come in and still catch the hike and ashy coming in. Um, I'm I'm looking at that one. I like I like the way that consumer stocks have looked. So, but I would want to catch it maybe more around. Let's see what the let's see what the two hour or the one hour chart would look like. May I mean at least down here at five seventy three, maybe even down here at five seventy. Costco raising fees and increasing their dividends. I don't even notice when they raise fees. That's how bad I am. I'm just like, oh, did you raise the fees? That's okay. Uh, what else? Let's get back out of here. Haven't done it in a little while, huh? Okay. Good info. Good info. Industrials. What do we? Oh my gosh! Look at that one. Uh, I've never seen it in one. Look at that jump. It wants to get to the Fibonacci uh, uh, extension in a day. Copart. Wow. All right. We're going to have to redraw our fibs on this one here when that thing settles back down. Crowd strike. A lot of things that are just sort of grinding out a little bit more bullishly. A lot of things are still just kind of hitting the same resistance level. So far, I think Aflac looks the best. Um, Aflac and Costco, I think, would actually be something we can talk about for building potential trades in the morning tomorrow, right? Uh, gold coming back down, okay. There's Google. Google still showing some, some strength. Gap is still setting up. The question is, do you have time before earnings? I think AEO was the same, right? Kind of similar. So gap, and that's that's consumer. Look at that. Higher highs, higher lows. We just don't have much time. The 16th is Thursday, I believe, after market. So if you got a trade signal tomorrow, you'd literally have three days. I, I usually want to have at least five. IBM. IBM could be a signal on uh, as of tomorrow, depending on, you can see we have the hook. We might get the pinch and the turn. Um, I don't think we would have the hike and ashy just yet, but very close. Yeah. Okay. So this is a good one too. We'll look at IBM as a, as a possible continuation trade, because if it gives us a hike and ashy candle like this, I would be comfortable coming in and putting the stop in, Literally initial stop under that candle, but I would move it at the end of the day and then I would trail it trying to do. Look how often when you when you catch IBM, you can see it just walks, walks, walks. You could just keep moving your stop every single time, just moving your stop up. So what would we like to do? We'd like to see if we can catch this and move the stops. IBM on the list. Yeah, there's some good looking stuff. Intel hitting resistance still. Is it trying to pinch and turn and maybe break through? Maybe, but it needs volume and the volume is dropping. That's a heavy resistance there. IWM. I actually think IWM is, is tradable. If it bounces out of this, what have we done? We've broken. Oh, that's not it. We've broken the consolidation. Now we're pulling back. If this turns, I think small caps might make its run back up here towards 180, maybe even 185, trying to recover. Meta, strong. Meta is back to old highs. Got it all back. Now what? Looks like a kind of a funky cup and handle. Cup, what are we waiting for? Handle. I will absolutely trade the handle, 100%. Microsoft, damn strong. Look at that. Just strong. 
we said we need Microsoft and Apple in place for for the for the Nasdaq to be strong. Same thing. Look at Nvidia, uh, NWSA. Okay, I, I actually said we'll see what earnings does. It's holding up. I would trade this coming out. This is communication services. PDD is a little overbought. PGR a little overbought. PLTR. Ugh, that one was would be something looking for. Uh, QQQ. We did not need that drawing. <laughs> cruise ships. Oh, cruise and travel. We may see something pull, developing in cruise and travel in, in com, consumer discretionary. Starbucks, consumer discretionary. Shopify, right? Some of these. I think we have two or three that we can really look at for, for tradable tomorrow. Um, so I hope you guys are good with us. Like I, I'm looking at putting those on is AMD on the list. It is. I'll go back up to that. Let me finish cranking through the rest of this. I'll go back up. Here's SPY still showing some strength. Tesla Tesla actually looks, um, like a, uh, a, a pretty good setup. We broke, we got back up to this area. It's pulling back as long as it stabilizes and turns through here. That's viable. I'm I'm considering it there. But from there, I think we could make a run back up into this 260, 265 area, right? Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's an interesting one, Tesla. Some people love trading Tesla. Here's Visa. Visa looks like it's trying to turn VIX. Still down. Uh, if you like energy still, Williams is a great representation. Just made new highs, still looking at higher lows. Walmart trying to turn, but doesn't have much time before earnings. Here's the XLs. Energy, down. Financials, staying pretty strong. Industrials, staying pretty strong. Those are the two we said are trying to. But there's also a little bit of strength in staples and a little bit of strength in utilities. I almost feel like putting a trade on uh, uh, the XLU ETF. Is AMD on our list? The answer is yes. This is what it looks like. Just kind of one big move grinding higher. We, we've got to wait. We've got to wait for a, consolid a consolidation. Something that looks like that. Okay. Um, also, I, it looks like there was another new name that popped in. Suzanne, welcome. Um, just wanted to say hello. Saw that you had popped in. Uh, real quickly, we have our posture, the economic calendar, what's happening this week. Let's take a quick peek at that. Uh, there you are. So a little more Fed Tuesday. What do we have? The, a little more Fed and then we get inflationary data. This is what the Fed is looking for. Right now, people are getting bullish on assumptions that the Fed is not going to raise rates anymore this is our one month from now 31 days one month the fed is going to announce as of right now it is 10 to 1 odds that they do not hike again which means they the market now thinks the fed is done the market thinking the fed is done is certainly adding to the bullishness that we're seeing and feeling right now Right. Um, with that in mind, this is the final bits of data that the Fed is going to be considering this inflation. We got CPI Tuesday. We've got PPI on Thursday, retail sales. I mean, we've got a lot coming out next week in production utilization. Um, yeah, we've got it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy week next week. The week after that, not much at all. Right. The holiday trading will die off during the week on the Thanksgiving holiday. So I think, you know, if if the inflationary data comes back pretty good, I think you're going to see that con continue to confirm. So that's what we have to be ready for. Are we going to likely have some bullish trades on going into that inflationary data? Probably so. Right. Probably so. There's nothing in our I'm looking for hedge signals. You know, you know, the more bullish I get, the more I start thinking, ooh, do I need to be ready to hedge? Yes. 
Yes, I do need to be ready to hedge. I absolutely do. Um, okay. Uh, I, I think we still have a good amount of things that could fire into trades. We have a few things that are actually showing. So if we start the week with momentum, there's a good chance we're looking to put trades on on Monday to uh, to benefit from that. So let's be ready for that. This week, what are we working on for our trading plan section? This week, we are working on... Uh, do I have the trading plan? Trading plan outline. This week, we are working on... Um, trading systems. Trading systems and rules. Um, actually, it is... Should be strategies, trading strategies and rules. Every strategy has what? What market do you buy? What time frame chart do you use? How much risk are you going to take on that system? What is an entry that should include both a setup and a trigger? When you get your entry, how do you determine your stop? What are your exits? Winning trades to the upside. How are you going to manage the trade? When will you tighten your stop? When will you possibly uh, take off? Profits, how much will you take off? What are your tactics? Are you taking off? Uh, last, The last bullish move, I told everybody after two days, I'm selling half. And I did. I sold half after two days, which was halfway through a great week. And then what? And then I rode the rest of it the rest of the week. Not one other trade that I, that I have any like, oh, should I sell it? No, I already sold half. I already, I already gave myself the the psychological fortitude to carry those as long as I could. But I followed my plan. My plan said sell half after two days. Would I do that now? No, absolutely not. Now, when I scale out, I'm more in the quarter to a third range. And now I'm thinking after three or four days, I'm going to sell a, a quarter or a third of my trade. So if I have five contracts, I might sell uh, two contracts, right? I might sell two contracts out of five. Or if I have four contracts, I might only sell one, one out of four. Tighten my stop. I've already locked some gain in. I've tightened my stop. I've reduced risk on what's left, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it more room. Why? Because my posture is better. The market is showing more strength. I'm not just wanting to. I'm not deciding to. The market's saying, hey, we're a little stronger here. The conditions have improved. Therefore, I'm a little bit more willing to anticipate trades. I'm a little bit more willing to stay longer, three or four days before I scale out versus only two. When I do scale out, I'm going to scale out less because I want to carry more of the trade. Um, prior, after five days, I was out. Now I'll give it upwards of seven to nine days. These are the subtle things that change as our posture improves, right? They're just these little subtle overarching rules of thumb that just help us to, to not have to think on every. The more we have to think, the more we're potentially letting the chimp out of the cage. We let that chimp out of the cage, he's going to go to the computer and start smashing things. Keep the, keep the professor at the computer, keep the chimp in the cage. Um, would I have a specific posture number that would trigger that? So not, not necessarily a specific number, because remember that everything we do with posture is a combination of, of, of assessment and momentum. So assessment is the current number. I'm a two, but my momentum is I've gone from a minus 0.5 to a 1.25 to a two. So I have two weeks of improving conditions. So, so it's, yeah, I, I wish there were right. And I get the desire to. Um, and some people I work with will create their own very, very mathematical, very definite concrete. They'll do the same. Like I've seen people do it with sector rotation. They don't like, for me, sector rotation, that it has a bit of subjectivity where we're like, well, I like the way that looks. Or they're like, they like run numbers and it gives them their number. And they like that better. Great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like, no, you can't. If that's how you assess sectors, great. So. You know, you might start to create your own subscales where you're like, if I get 
two points, three points over a period of two weeks. If I am at, right? And you start to kind of create these if-then scenarios. I love that. Any Anything you can do like that, because when are you doing that? You're doing that Saturday and Sunday and in the evening when you're when the, the professor is more likely to be running the show, right? It's during market hours that the chimp really makes the biggest amount of noise to get out of the out of the cage. So so yeah, the more you start correlating action to analysis, the better off we're gonna be. Absolutely, 100 percent Love it. Um, so this is what we're working on. Remember, there is a video. So I will send you the link to the video. The links, the, today's email will have the links to the video for the trading plan, the link for the trading plan, um, everything that you need to be working on that. But let's get those rules in place, um, specifically your bullish rules, because we're probably going to be utilizing them. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, send me this, send me that one. I have some time to take a look at it today, Stephen. I'd love to see what you send. Um, I'm going to be uh, uh, getting the Discord next iteration, uh, the next link for Discord to get some new people on. Um, I'm going to be trying to create some specific routines around how we use Discord. So be looking out for that. Um, okay. Questions, comments, concerns before we wrap it up. Remember that we're meeting tomorrow morning, 15 minutes before the market opens. And for the first half an hour, Although we sometimes bleed five to seven minutes into that next little bit. I think we have some good opportunities for some trades that we've been patient waiting for. Let's be ready to take those. Um, then remember Tuesday, Thursday in the evening this week, we have our trading foundations um, intro to options. That's, that's going to, there'll be a little bit of repeat between those two days and the options foundations class itself. Um, but uh, I think you'll find that to be super helpful if, if you're, moving into a, a primarily options type of a trader. All right. Well, thanks everybody. It's great to see you. Uh, have a great rest of your Sunday. You know, make, go, go make sure your trade logs are up to date. Uh, go make sure your stops, targets, and, and uh, adjustments are, are in place for any trades that you're considering. Um, and, uh, uh, make sure you have a short list ready to go for next week for any trades that you might take. Have a great rest of your day. As always, happy trading.